Welcome to the Natural Super Kids Podcast, where you will discover practical strategies to inspire you to boost the health and nutrition of your kids. I'm Jessica Donovan, a qualified naturopath specializing in kids' health, and I want to make it as easy as possible for you to raise healthy and happy kids. Let's get into it. How are you? Jessica Donovan here. So great to be back on the podcast, continuing our series on immunity and winter infections for kids. But all of this is very applicable to adults as well. I know there's lots of sick sick mums and dads, mainly due to the germs that our lovely children bring home with them and then pass on to us. So I really hope you're keeping well this winter. Um, If you've missed uh, our last couple of episodes or if this is your first Natural Super Kids podcast episode, hello and welcome. I did just want to mention that over the last couple of weeks, we have been covering this topic, immunity and winter infection. So I did an episode on fever and I did an episode on why your kids get sick so often. Today, we're focusing on those pesky coughs, sometimes more than pesky. You know, they can get fairly serious. Um, So today I want to talk about coughs and also we'll cover croup because it's something that us naturopaths, uh, particularly here at Natural Super Kids, do see a lot of. So I want to talk to you about about croup because uh, there's lots of kids that get recurrent croup and they they seem – They tend to be the kids that we uh, see and help here at Natural Super Kids because the, you know, modern medicine has limited options um, and some of the medications can be quite harsh as well. So coughs, so common in kids, you know, our kids can have dry coughs and wet coughs. Like I said, it can develop into croup, bronchitis, bronchiolitis. There can be a wheezing coughs. Um, there can be asthma associated with coughs as well. And of course, the cough we all want to avoid, which is whooping cough. Um, so there, there's a variety of different coughs, but Today we're going to be focusing on um, those, you know, th- those kind of everyday coughs that kids get very often, as well as croup. So, as I said, coughs are very common in kids, and they do cause significant interruptions in our homes. You know that those awful noises, seeing our kids in discomfort, those sleepless nights, because of course, coughing gets worse at night often um, when our kids are laying down, and so it can really affect the well-being of the whole family. So, coughs are most commonly caused by respiratory respiratory tract infections, mostly viruses. Sometimes they can be bacterial in origin, but mainly they're viruses. So of course, that means that antibiotics are not usually effective, um, an effective treatment for coughs because they are caused by a respiratory tract virus. And of course, antibiotics are not effective against viruses, only bacteria. And then, you know, we've got those chronic coughs, which are really common at the moment. Um, And these can be because of certain viruses. Uh, Chronic coughs can go on for weeks or even months. So some kids are really prone to that post-viral cough, um, no matter what the virus is. You know, some kids get that chesty cough every time they get sick and other kids don't get coughs. So I've got examples of that in my in my kids. My son is more prone to coughs when he gets sick. My daughter will get the same, the very same virus and she won't be coughing at all. So it's really interesting how viruses affect different kids. So, you know, if you're listening to this episode, you may have one of those children that just every time they get sick, it goes straight to their chest and they end up with um, with a cough. So red flags I really want to cover. You know, what do we what do we need to to worry about? When do we need to worry or when do we need to seek medical attention um, when our kids are coughing? So if your child has a wet 
or phlegmy cough that lasts over a week, it's a good idea to go to your GP and get that checked out. And of course, if if there's ever any trouble breathing, any wheezing, any unusual breathing sounds like strider, you can you can Google that and and listen to to what that sounds like. Um, isn't the internet an amazing amazing resource for us these days? And then when it so so these are all all red flags. We definitely want to seek medical attention if there's any trouble breathing, unusual breathing sounds, or wheezing. And then there's obviously whooping cough, which is a very serious cough caused by a specific um a, a, a specific virus. Excuse me, a specific bacterial infection causes whooping cough, not virus. Um, and whooping cough comes, you know, the cough comes in long spells and often ends with that high pitched whoop sound, high, a high pitched whoop sound um, when the child breathes in. And of course, if there's any feeling um, that your child may have whooping cough, particularly if they are an infant under under 12 months old, we definitely want to be seeking medical attention. Of course, you're not going to know if that's what it is until you get you get that diagnosis. So I just wanted to run through, you know, some of those red flags. But generally, we can treat a cough at home. And the great thing is that natural therapies, naturopathy, natural medicine has a lot to offer when it comes to coughs. So I'll go through some of the the foundational things to be thinking about um, when it comes to treating and preventing coughs in kids. And then we'll talk a little bit about croup after that, because as I said, that's a really common issue um, as well. So when it comes to coughs, as I said, that they are caused by a respiratory tract infection, a virus. So we want to be supporting that general immune system. I think this is sometimes overlooked. We go straight to what, you know, what cough medicine can I can I give? And if we are, and of course, some, you know, we, we'll move on to that. There are some great things that we can use to soothe the cough and to, you know, reduce inflammation of the respiratory tract. But we want to start with supporting the immune system. And of course, we can do this in many ways. At the moment, we are running a free masterclass on uh, three ways to boost your kid's immune system. So we go into, a, I go into a lot of detail in that masterclass of the very things that you can do that are really effective to boost your kid's immune system. So if you want to sign up for that, I would highly recommend it. We're getting lots of great feedback from that. Um, click on the link in the show notes. If you head on over to the show notes, it'll be clear. Um, you'll see where you can sign up for that free masterclass and it's on demand. So you can watch it, um, you know, when it's most convenient for you. You don't have to show up at a certain time. So head on over to the show notes to, to find out more about that. But what I will say is that, you know, food and nutrition is a really good start when it comes to ways we can support our kids' immune system. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Nutrients are what power the immune system. Nutrients are like fuel for our, our kids' immune cells. And if they're lacking in nutrition because they're eating too many processed foods, too many packaged foods, because they're not eating enough because they're fussy eaters and they're not eating enough healthy food that is high in nutrients, um, then this could be a problem. This could be slowing down um, the efficiency of their immune cells and their immune system. So uh, as a, I guess, as a blanket as a blanket rule, we want to move away from so much processed packaged food, food that's high in sugar because sugar depletes the immune system. I talked about that in last week's episode and move towards more fresh whole foods, more fruits, more vegetables, more good quality protein, but particularly those colorful fruits and vegetables. Try and get as much of that natural color from fruits and vegetables onto your family's plate um, every day. So uh, nutrients such as vitamin C, zinc, and vitamin D as well as many others, vitamin A, selenium, um, are really great for supporting the immune system. So they're my, they're my three key 
nutrients for the immune system, uh, vitamin C, zinc, and vitamin D. And probiotics can be really helpful as well because a healthy gut equates to a healthy immune system. You know, a lot of 80% of our immune system is located within the gut. So it relies on really good gut health. And so a probiotic supplement and foods that are high in probiotics, fermented foods, um, are really great for supporting the immune system as well. When our kids have a cough, we also want to make sure that they are well hydrated. Uh, this is great for, you know, preventing any seriously ill effects from infections, um, keeping our kids hydrated, but also hydration can help to thin out uh, any mucus that is present that will be exacerbating a cough. So keeping your kids hydrated with things like water, of course, um, but even things like bone broth can be great. So, uh, you know, you can incorporate that into meals. So soupy meals for hydration can be really great as well. And then my favorite way to treat coughs in kids are, is our herbs. Herbal medicines, particularly in liquid form, are fantastic and they are working very differently than a pharmaceutical cough mixture might um, because those pharmaceutical cough mixtures are often suppressing the cough. But with herbs, you're working on building up that immune system. Many of the herbs that are great for coughs are also great for the immune system. So you're giving your kids that immune immune kick, immune support, as well as soothing the airways in the respiratory system, which can really help to reduce the, the symptoms of a cough, reduce the coughing. But it's not by suppressing the cough. A lot of these herbs help to reduce inflammation in, in the bronchi bron the, in the bronchioles. Um, so it kind of opened that they, they can help open up the airways. So my very favorite herb for coughs and my Natural Super Kids Club members will vouch for this because I'm always talking about it, is thyme. The thyme that you use in your kitchen is great for cough. So growing some thyme in your garden over winter can be really great because you can make up your own cough remedy. And if you're a club member, you have access to our thyme and honey cough mixture that you can make at home. Our club members swear by this mixture. Um, and it literally is just thyme and honey, which can be really soothing for coughs as well. I like to use Manuka honey. So a combination of thyme and manuka honey are really great for coughs. I also love herbs such as licorice, ginger, and another herb called muleen, um, M-U-L-L-E-I-N, are great for, for coughs as well, for soothing that respiratory tract and also, you know, having that immune supportive action as well. I really love a brand. It is a practitioner only brand. You can only get it through practitioners um, called MediHerb. And we always have one of their cough mixtures in our pantry through the winter. They do taste pretty <gasps> herby. <laughs> the good thing is things like licorice and ginger are, you know, are nicer tasting herbs than some other herbs as is thyme. Um, but they do have that sort of herby taste. So my kids have grown up with these kinds of liquid herbs. Um, I've, I've um, passed some, some on to friends before and they're like, you expect my kids to drink that? There's no way. Um, but we just put it in, you know, a little bit, in a little bit of water and, and have it like a shot. You don't, we definitely don't want to fill up a big glass of water and put it in there because it is quite a strong, a strong taste. As always, I do recommend you get professional advice advice when it comes to herbs. Um, even though they're natural, that, is, that does not mean that they are safe and efficient for everybody. And the benefit of getting professional advice and prescriptions when it comes to herbs rather than just grabbing something off the shelf is one, you do, you will get access to the higher quality herbs as opposed to the ones that you'll find on the supermarket and pharmacy shelves. And two, it will be the, the 
correct herb that's going to be most helpful for your child um, because it does depend on you know different factors and other things that, that might be going on and herbs can have interactions with certain medications so definitely if your kids are on any medications or they have any allergies you want to seek the uh, seek some professional advice and we can help with that in natural super kids we have some really popular consultations called express consultations they're 20 minutes long and they are designed for this exact um, purpose you know my child has a cough what I want to get access to the good stuff this is their presentation um, our practitioner will ask you know the right questions and be able to give you access to to the right herb. So that's a great little service. You can find um, links to that. I'll make sure I pop them in the show notes, but also on our website, naturalsuperkids.com. And the other thing that can be really great for cough coughs is aromatherapy. So a couple of my favorite essential oils for coughs are lavender and eucalyptus. Now I will be very clear here, you don't take these herbs internally. They are great for, um, you know, to put into vaporizers. Um, or my favorite is like a, a chesty rub. I really love the one, two, three, nourish me brand of um, they do a really great and effective chesty rub balm. I was using it um, a couple of weeks ago for my son's cough overnight. It really helped to soothe that cough um, overnight. One night he was coughing, coughing, coughing. I went and um, gave him this and he rubbed it on his chest and uh, his coughing stopped. I didn't hear any more coughing from him. So a good quality natural chesty balm can be great and a much better alternative to things like Vicks Vaporub, which is is full of full of rubbish. Um, I know it's really popular. I know I remember I used to use this as a kid, but there is mu- uh, much better options out there, um, natural options out there now. So I'll make sure I pop the link to the 123 Nourish Me Chesty Rub Balm in the show notes as well. So you can find that easily. Now let's move on to croup because I also want to sort of talk a little bit about asthma, but next week's episode, I'm going to cover asthma a little bit more um, in depth and, and we're specifically going to be talking about kids with allergies and atopic conditions like asthma. Um, you know, what extra care or what specific things are going to be helpful for their immunity. But when I'm talking about croup, um, you know, asthma is very similar in the way that we we treat it naturopathically. So this will be helpful if your child is asthmatic or you suspect they might be asthmatic. So croup is a condition where a virus causes swelling in the larynx and trachea in the windpipe. So this leads to a harsh barking sound and a high pitched noise when inhaling, similar to that that whooping cough sound that we, that we talked about. That high pitched noise when inhaling, um, and the swelling can also make it really difficult to, difficult to breathe. So croup isn't caused by a specific. Um, a, a specific virus or bacteria like whooping cough is, but it is it's a um, it's a secondary kind of problem from a, a, a virus, a respiratory virus. So it occurs mostly in winter, of course, and younger children between six months and five years are most likely to develop croup. Um, and as I said, it's a secondary infection. So it generally starts with a cough, a cold. Um, or a fever, and then it develops into croup. And some children are prone to developing croup, just like coughs, whenever they have a cold. Um, so they can have multiple sort of episodes of croup in a year. Mo- it's, croup can be scary. It sounds scary, but most cases will self-resolve. It is a good idea to, to seek medical attention if you're concerned at all, and a, a particularly if there's any difficulty breathing, of course. Um, and why some kids are more prone to croup than others. This is a question that I get from those parents who have these kids with recurring croup. Why does he always get croup when his brother never gets it and it's the same virus? So um, most of the time what I find in, in clinical practice is that kids that, are, that do get recurrent croup 
nearly always, from my experience, have an allergy or an atopic condition of some sort. So they might have a food allergy, they might have an environmental allergy or hay fever or asthma or eczema or a combination of these things. And science actually supports this. So the research has found that kids with a history of croup are at a higher risk of developing asthma. Um, And kids who have recurrent croup are often diagnosed with asthma a few years later. There's also an association between croup and allergies. So kids with allergies will have hyperreactive airways, which make them more prone to croup. I have some links to the, the this research um, and I'll make sure I pop that in the show notes. So it's an article all, all about croup um, and within that article, you'll find the links to this research. So when it comes to croup, because there is nearly always that allergy, a topic kind of picture, we want to make sure that we are supporting that. So of course, we want to be doing that general immune support that I talked about earlier. Um, But we also want to be thinking specifically what we can do, you know, to support the immune system because it is dysregulated uh, when it when there's all of this kind of allergy atopic um, activity going on. So being aware of that, if you're not sure or you don't know if your child has an allergy or a sensitivity or an intolerance, you might just, hopefully this will just plant the seed that that is likely. It's not definite, but it is likely. So one way to lighten the load on the immune system is to remove anything that may be triggering it. Many kids with recurring croup do have food sensitivities, at least, if not allergies. And most commonly, in my experience, it is dairy. So often kids with recurring croup do really well when we remove dairy from their diet, or at least some um, some dairy products. Because eliminating dairy is a big step. And to get a clear picture as to whether that is making a difference, you do want to really do it for at least six weeks. Um, So that's just, I'm not going to go into detail about that. We do have another podcast episode on dairy that I will link in the show notes um, in case you're interested in in listening to that where I go into a bit more, more detail. Again, it's best to get professional support with this, but that other podcast episode on dairy um, will help point you in the right direction. But when it comes to sort of regulating Um, the immune system, there are a couple of things that are really important. Number one is vitamin D. So vitamin D is really important in the strength of our immune defenses, but also the regulation of our immune system. And a lot of kids with allergies or atopic conditions are low in vitamin D. So we want to make sure that um, kids with, with these kinds of issues have really good vitamin D levels, which may require supplementation. We also want to be building up, working working on building up that allergic tolerance. So um, we can do this with, again, vitamin D is really important in this and the gut microbiome is really important in this. So if you do have kids with allergies, you definitely want to want to be working on gut health or be really um, aware of gut health and, you know, getting them onto a good Uh, quality probiotic can be a really great first step. And then including fermented foods in their diet is really important as well. Of course, these are more long-term strategies for croup, um, but I just want to, you know, plant these seeds, as I said, for parents that are being driven crazy by recurrent issues in croup. When it comes to acute strategies for croup, um, again, we want to keep our kids well hydrated. Um, 
exposure to cold air can help. So cold air can ease the symptoms of croup and reduce inflammation, giving them pretty quick relief. So you can bundle them up and take them outside if it's a cold day, or if you'd rather keep them inside, you can open the fridge door or the freezer door and have have them pop their head in there and breathe deeply. Of course, if there's, you know, if there's major if there's difficulty breathing, you want to be seeking medical attention, but that can work really well for some kids. Um, The chesty rubs can be really helpful for croup as well. As I mentioned before, my favorite is the one, two, three, nourish me chesty rub and um, herbs such as licorice and thyme and ginger um, can be really helpful here that I mentioned earlier as well. So that is croup and coughs. I hope that has given you some some good um, some good practical information on how you can support your kids with coughs and croup. Um, it is a big issue at the moment. It is inevitable that our kids are going to pick up viruses, and some of those are going to develop into coughs. So I hope you're you're staying sane. But I would really also appreciate it if you could pass this. Um, episode onto any other mums that you know that are struggling with winter illnesses. I will be back next week talking about um, allergies, kids with allergies and what extra care we need to take when it comes to their immune systems over winter. Goodbye. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Head on over to our website, naturalsuperkids.com for the show notes for this episode, as well as a whole heap of inspiration to help you raise healthy and happy kids. I'll see you next week.